What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week, give you all of your tech news stories in one single video. And this week has got a lot of information, a lot of rumors going on about the Galaxy Z Flip 3, the Galaxy Z Fold 3. We've got information on update, a big update that's coming out for the Galaxy, and in some cases it already is out, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and so much more, guys. Enjoy this week's episode. And I'll see you in the next one. Rock. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day, Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which I don't have in my office right now, but it has a great camera, like a really, really nice camera. Probably, I don't know, one of the best, if not the best cameras on Android. And DxO Mark has rated this camera for videos and photos and be, be, be prepared, I think, at least anyway, to be kind of shocked. And these cores, again, come from DxO Mark. And as you can see, they're not even in the top 10. The S20 Ultra beat it, which I actually don't, but not by a lot, but the S20 Ultra beat it. And I actually think I've had both of those phones and I definitely feel like the Note 20 Ultra has a better camera, especially with the focusing. And uh, you know all these other phones beat it as well. Now I'll be, be honest, I didn't try any of these other phones, but I've seen other people on Twitter and stuff that have used these phones. And they are just saying, you know, the Note is way better than these other phones. If you've used these other phones, let me know if you think it's better than the Note 20 Ultra. I don't know, I think the Note 20 Ultra camera is pretty fantastic. Next up is about the Galaxy S21, like the regular version, not the Ultra or the Plus version, the regular version. And the latest rumor coming out, coming out from Co, is saying that it's going to have a plastic back. I actually don't look at that as too much of a negative, I'll be honest with you. The uh, Pixel phone, I always do this. I always do this. I always do this. I'm looking for it. I just saw it a second ago. Now I can't find it. Where'd you go, Pixel phone? Where'd you go? Man, I throw all these phones on my desk. Here it is. Here it is, I found it. it has like that polycarbonate back. I actually like it. it. It's not heavy. It's not gonna crack if I break it. I don't mind it. So for me, have an S21 having a plastic back, save money, less headache, I'm down for it. What about you guys? I, I, I know a lot of you probably won't end up buying the S21. You'll probably want the Ultra version, but still, what do you guys think about a plastic back on the S21? Let me know in the comments below. Also speaking on the Galaxy S21 series of phones, what about under display camera? Meaning there would be like, you wouldn't see a camera on the screen at all. It would be underneath that display is that going to happen on the s21 because there was rumors that you know you wouldn't see the camera up there on the phone is that going to happen miura qhd is reporting that s21 with no udc aka no under display camera is it the end of the world no is it gonna you know make a little some people upset probably but that's some of the information we're hearing about the S21 is it's not going to be this ultra, ultra flagship phone. It'll have some flagship specs, but then other specs will kind of be like mid-range. Maybe that's gonna be their mid-range type thing with their phones is they won't have under display cameras, but the ultra flagship phones will. And speaking of under display cameras, the last rumor coming out is about the Galaxy Z Fold Three, and this comes from H. Wang, who says Samsung's first under display camera adopted smartphone is expected to be the Galaxy Z Fold 3, not the Galaxy S21, like we just spoke about. And what that is all about, again, is going to be the fact that you wouldn't see that huge camera on the Z, you know, the Z Fold. And this potentially, and, and rumor is, is that flagship phones for Samsung from here on out for the foreseeable future will be they're foldable phones. They're not gonna be their candy bar phones. Candy bar phones, like I said, will have some flagship specs. Some of the specs won't be. They're gonna reserve the full flagship specs for these phones. And, and that's absolutely fine with me because now it's hard to go from this back to a regular candy bar phone. I'm so used to this phone at this point. I haven't even had a case on this phone the whole time I've had it. And knock on wood, I haven't dropped it at least in a, in a bad area in terms of like the ground, like cement or something. Um, I don't have it. I don't think I have any scratches. I don't see any. So I'm like, I'm super safe with it and I love it. It's an awesome phone. It's so much fun. I don't know anybody that doesn't really love this phone.
let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Galaxy Z Fold 2. And if you have insurance through Samsung, which costs $11.99 per month, and you break your phone and you send it in for repair, be prepared to not get it back, or maybe even a replacement, for quite a long time. Time. This tweet comes from Max Weinbach, who I followed a little bit on his journey of his broken Galaxy Z Fold, and this is his latest seven hours ago saying, my Fold 2 repair has now been delayed since Samsung doesn't have back panels for the Fold 2 in their repair center. How many months until I get my phone back? This is bad. I, I, this is the way I feel. If you have an insurance policy, and you break your phone and you send it off to the manufacturer and the manufacturer doesn't have the parts and they won't for, I would say, at least a week, maybe two weeks, Samsung should be sending him a new or refurbished phone at this point. He should not have to wait to get his phone fixed because they don't have the part in place. They should be sending him a phone and then when his phone can be fixed, then send that out to somebody else or resell it or whatever they wanna do with it. He should not, ha not have to wait. That, that's not his problem that Samsung offers an insurance policy and they don't give him a new phone or some replacement phone at this point. He should not have to wait longer than, like I said, I would say a week at the most. Shame on Samsung. I mean, Samsung's doing a lot of crappy things lately in my book. This is one of them with the repairs on uh, at least the Z Fold anyway. They didn't even, when he originally sent the phone in for repair, you couldn't, he couldn't even get it, uh, he couldn't even get it submitted because they didn't have it in the system. That's BS, that's bad. The other thing is, I, I did a video on this today, is their cases, it's in my other room so I can't grab it. The case that I bought from Samsung, it's like $60 case, it should be like 20 bucks, it's a piece of crap. Don't buy it, yeah, next story. As you can see from the update, Samsung One UI 3.0, Android 11, public beta is available right now. If you live in Korea, so you sign up through the Samsung members app. It's not available everywhere. At the time of making this video, it's only available, again, in South Korea um, for the S20 phones. Not S20 Fan Edition, only the S20 series of phones, except again, the S20 Fan Edition. Note 20 should probably come out in the next couple weeks over there, and then after that you should see the rollout across the world. The other thing is, is if you're a developer and you're on that beta, you can actually, and this is, I guess is even in America, you can actually get the beta edition that, you know, more updated, the one that's out in South Korea, you can get that here in America. I saw a little post on Reddit, the update for is 846 megs, and uh, reading through it, it sounds like it's more uh, smooth, Things run a little bit better. Uh, there's still some bugs, but ultimately, if you're a developer, you can get the regular beta now as well. Next up, Apple is going to officially create 5G on October 13th. At least that's what they're gonna tell you. They're gonna say, we created 5G, 5G's out for our phones right now. Whatever, they're gonna create something that's been out everywhere else meaning their new iPhones are gonna have 5G. They're gonna announce some of these new iPhones on, oh, maybe all of them anyway, October 13th, 10 a.m. You can see high speed. What does that mean? Obviously it means 5G. Please join us for a special Apple event from Apple Park. Watch it online at apple.com. Again, October 13th, 10 a.m. So just a week away from today, you'll be able to watch their unveiling of their new iPhone 12s. And the last story of the day, flip phones, the Z Flip to be precise. The new generation of this, the third generation, the second generation, whatever you want to call it, they've had a, a Z Flip, they've had a Z Flip 5G, maybe the next one will just be called Z Flip 2 or Z Flip 3, whatever they end up calling it. We've got a little bit more information on it, these couple tweets. The first one's from Chun saying, smaller punch hole, Snapdragon 875 inside. So if you want the best processor from Android, uh, the Snapdragon 875 will be inside of it. The other one comes from DJ Co, or not DJ Co, I should say. It says, mark this confirmed, Z Flip will have a Snapdragon 875, and then the punch hole will be similar in size to the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition. So there you guys go. A couple things to know, uh, at least rumor-wise, about the Z Flip. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Microsoft Surface Duo. If you watch my channel, you know that I have uh, returned this back to Microsoft. It was too buggy for me and I just fell in love too much with the Galaxy Z Fold. 
And uh, I, one of the things I, I wanted is I knew they could be fixed, but it needed an update. That update looks like it has rolled out at this point. And uh, one of my buddies even has gotten the update and he had some thoughts already on it. Jimmy is promo. He put on a tweet talking about the update. And it's not even that large of an update, surprisingly. It's only 113 megs. Uh, he says it feels much, much smoother, more responsive, better at flipping screens. Keyboard is better. No lags yet. Switching screens is faster. Closing apps is faster. He says, good job, Surface. And this is a great thing to have. If I had this phone style, I definitely would have done the update by now and given you my thoughts on it. But for me, I still, even with that improved update, I still feel like the Z Fold 2 is just a much better phone in almost every regard. We talked about it yesterday, the update for the Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, and S20 Ultra for Android 11, One UI 3.0 beta. The public beta was out in South Korea, and right now it's out in America too. What you need to do is you need to go into your Samsung Members app on your phone. Once you go to the Samsung Members app, you should see a little headline that says One UI Beta Program. Click on that, go through the steps, enroll, and you should be able to get that update for your phone to get the latest and greatest version of uh, the One UI and Android 11 software on your phone. At that point, uh, just know if you do sign up for it, your phone might be buggy. But overall, I've heard some very good things about it being faster, a little bit more updated. So check it out if you're interested in it and you're not too worried about being beta software. It's available right now, at least in America. Galaxy S21, we've been talking about it a little bit. We've got some more uh, early, early rumors. This isn't definitive. This is just rumors. But let's talk about it. This tweet comes from not DJ Co. It says Ga Galaxy S21 will have a glastic back. And we've heard it's going to have that kind of plastic back. 120 hertz display at $899 to start off the price. And then the S21 Ultra, 120 hertz display as well with a bright HM2 sensor on there. Again, not really anything crazy on here, uh, but just good to see some preliminary specs coming out for these phones already. Next up, remember Max Weinbach had some issues with his Galaxy Z Fold 2 where it was cracked and Samsung was taking forever to get it uh, fixed and it looks like it was gonna take a really, really long time. Well, he put out this tweet saying, just got a call from Samsung HQ, New Jersey. They're repairing my phone for free and overnighting it back to me once fixed. The part comes in tomorrow or Friday. That is how it should have been in the first place. Other than them, other than the free repair, I'm fine paying. So that's great to hear. And I totally, totally agree with them. When you have these insurance policies, it should be Bam, 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 bam. You shouldn't have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks. Give them either a new phone, either a refurbished phone, and if you don't have a refurbished phone, again, give them a new phone or get that damn thing fixed. The customer's I, always right. That's the way it should be. That's the way it always has. That's what makes great customer service. So I'm glad that Samsung is at least taking this initiative, probably because he's a, a bigger name in the tech industry, especially on Twitter. Good job, Samsung. I don't know what else to say beyond that. Last story of the day is pretty big and pretty exciting. And it has to do with the hinge on the Galaxy Fold. This looks like it come to, should come to the Galaxy Fold 3. And it's a feature, before I jump into it, that's going to potentially change the way you get information and know about information on your phone. Other than having this front display, it could be for notifications. Who knows what else, just to make the phone look cool. Check this out. This information comes from Let's Go Digital. It says Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 might feature a light indicator on the hideaway hinge. And what that means is that that hinge on the phone would light up different colors to let you know information. Maybe you're getting a phone call, maybe you can customize it just to go off. Who knows? But that is very, very cool that it would potentially give you notifications, give you information about the phone, make the phone look different all along this hinge right here, or at least a part of the hinge overall. That is a very, very cool feature, and it's a feature that will add onto its premium flagship capabilities from what we're hearing 
for the Galaxy Z Fold and Fold lines and flip lines for Samsung in the coming future iterations. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day, Nest is coming up with a new thermostat. How exciting is that? This one's not just any thermostat. This one's only gonna cost $129 when it comes out eventually. That's the rumor anyway. And it's going to come with hand gestures. That's right. You're gonna be able to control your smart thermostat with hand gestures like stop or or whatever, something like that. Hand gestures control your thermostat from far away. Well, probably not super far away, but somewhat far away. Coming soon, how soon we don't know, but somewhat soon, maybe months, maybe a year. I don't know, new thermostat coming from Nest. Next up, another rumor for the Galaxy S21 series of phones. Maybe not all of them, maybe one of them, but it's about the camera and about video. If you remember, we'll just talk about the Note 20 Ultra because that's the newest candy bar phone. When you go into the camera and you go into settings and you go into rear video size, you'll see 8K and you can do 8K, which is 8K 7680 by 4320 at 24 frames per second. Well, the rumored increase or improvement with that for the S21 series of phones is that it's going to have 8K 30 at 30 frames per second. So 8K 30 frames per second. Um, you're more a QHD saying he's saying 60 frames per second is possible, but probably not likely. So six more frames per second on your camera. Amazing. Amazing, think of all that, all the things you're gonna fit in now with those six frames. Oh my God. Last story of the day, Samsung Galaxy Buds. There's a new filed trademark from Samsung that lets us know possibly what the new name will be for the next generation of Galaxy Buds. And there you are, Samsung Buds Sound. So that should be the name of the next generation of buds that come out from Samsung, whenever that is, either later this year, probably 2021 though, I don't think they're gonna come out this year. So 2021 most likely, either early 21 or late 2021. This should be the new name of the next generation of buds. Let's get into the tech news, first story of the day. Galaxy Note 20, Note 20 Ultra. There's a new update rolling out. There is an October update rolling out. You might've already got it, uh, or it, it's gonna hit your phone soon, but there's an additional update rolling out as well that does some cool stuff. And that update, once it rolls out to your phone, is about a 255 meg update. And what it's going to do is going to uh, include battery life improvements so better battery life with this update, and it also improves the stability of the camera and dark mode feature. These are some good updates in here, not specifically exactly what about the battery has been fixed or how they made it last longer or the camera improvements or anything like that, but those are two areas I think a lot of people always want improvements are. One being battery, because you want your phone to last longer and longer and longer, and that's definitely a welcome addition. And then better camera or just more stable camera um, performance. So why wouldn't you want that? So that should be rolling out soon. You might already you might already have gotten this update as well. You might have both updates at this point, but eventually you will get this update if you don't have it by now. And the last story of the day, all about, it's in the other room, damn. My favorite phone, the Galaxy Z Fold, Two, I love it so much that it's not with me right now. New color coming out in China. This passed through their, you know, F, their whatever, the, whatever you call their FCC over there. The color is crazy nice. It's a platinum gold with a black camera module, and it really stands out. Almost looks like mirror, kind of mirrory in a way, but not really. It's got like the lines on there with the black camera module, with the gold all the way around the phone and including gold around the camera module. It looks very classy, very, very expensive too. If you had this phone and you showed this off, this would really, really make people pop and want this, I think. It's a really beautiful looking color for a phone and it goes, even on the edges there, you're gonna get gold. It just looks fantastic, looks amazing for this Galaxy Z Fold. This would totally pass as an ultra premium edition. I don't think it is. 
but still, it looks freaking crazy. Let's get into the news. First story of the day is really, really interesting, and it's a kind of change of things that look to be coming to YouTube as a platform. So YouTube, as you know, is, is generally just used as, you know, for you to watch videos. It looks like that's gonna change a little bit. You'll still be able to watch videos. That's not going to change, but you'll also be able to potentially buy products directly spoken about in the videos of these, you know, from these creators that you watch and buy the product directly from YouTube or whatever shopping uh, site that they end up using. The latest information coming from Bloomberg is that Google plans to make YouTube a major shopping destination. And a little snippet from Bloomberg says, the goal is to convert YouTube's bounty of videos into a vast catalog of items that viewers can peruse, click on, and buy directly. According to people familiar with the situation, the company is also testing a new integration with Shopify for selling items through YouTube. A YouTube spokesperson confirmed the company is testing these features with a limited number of video channels. Creators will have control over the products that are displayed, the spokesperson said. The company described this as an experiment and declined to share more details. Now, they already kind of do this with Teespring. Teespring, like you can buy Greggle's TV shirt and it shows like right below my video they do stuff like that but it looks like they're going to add a further amount of products maybe they're going to start selling you know phones or you know laptops and things like that i mean i this isn't the way i look at it it's not a bad thing it just makes shopping a little bit more easy a little bit more competitive a lot of people already and only shop on amazon or say best buy this would allow you to buy products you know and see them right below the video instead of you having to find a link in the description or something like that so for me i'm all for it as long as it doesn't bother uh the overall viewing experience for the viewer and the last story of the day galaxy z fold three we're on the two right now and as you know i've spoken about this before there's two displays there's one right here which it's off and then you've got one which my lights just changed right here let me switch my lights back to starlight and so you have multiple you know screens on here and then there's also a rumor going on that the z fold 3 will have this led display that lights up different colors it's not going to necessarily be a display that has words or anything or it's just going to change colors and it would come with the Z Fold 3. And that's really what we're talking about still, but we have a little bit more of a diagram of what this potentially could look like coming from Let's Go Digital. And you can see it's gonna be just like a little strip. Doesn't look like it's gonna completely cover that hinge. It's just gonna be a little strip along the hinge and it would be a light indicator that gives you the ability to, again, no, probably more notification information uh, when the phone is closed up because when it's opened, you can't necessarily see that hinge because again, it's blocked uh, by the rest of the, the phone's hardware. But this is a cool idea and would theoretically give it a third display and also make the display a little bit more complex to create. And it's already a fairly complex uh, product to make right now, obviously, you know, with this, with the hinge and the multiple displays and it, it it's great. So I'm all for it though, as long as it, again, doesn't mess up the experience of the phone and only enhances it. Let's get into the tech news. We've only got one story today. It's about the Galaxy S21 and it's further current confirmation that this phone is most likely and probably going to be just an ordinary, no big frills kind of phone and may even disappoint you. This tweet comes from Ice Universe, there's actually two tweets. The first one says, it is impossible for the Galaxy S21 series to support 65 watt charging and still maintain 45 watt charging. No matter where you see someone saying that the S21 supports 65 watts, it is wrong. Except for conventional processor upgrades, it can be said the S21 has no breakthroughs. And then his second tweet says, S21 is an ordinary product. I have emphasized many times that you need to turn your attention to the Galaxy Z series. And that's the sentiment we've been hearing a lot of, is that the S21 is not going to be this, you know, year over year big upgrade like it has in the past. I mean, You'll, you might, you'll probably see a, a modern day processor, but a lot of the other things might not be completely blown out of the water. Maybe they'll use the same exact cameras from last year. Maybe they'll, you know, the battery, the battery size is supposed to be the same. There's things that are gonna be the same, 
maybe, I, I don't imagine there'll be less, but I don't think you're gonna see these big upgrades anymore. They're pushing their attention to the Z series, the flip, the fold, and whatever phones they add onto that. And once you play, I haven't really said this a lot, but once you play with a fold, for instance, because I'll be honest, I wasn't blown away by the flip. When you play with a Z Fold 2, and you use it for more than a week or two, and you go back to a traditional phone like this, you're going to be bored of this kind of phone. These candy bar phones coming from this and going back to this, they're boring. They're not exciting as much anymore. They're just, I mean, I, for most people, you know, this will be absolutely fine. You know, maybe that's all somebody wants. But once you go to this and then you go to this, it just feels boring. It does. It feels like you're taking a step back. It, this feels like the past. It is the past. These are the future. These are the future devices that everybody will have. They'll improve this. This will get skinnier. The, um, it, you know, maybe the outside display will be bigger. Maybe it'll be easier to hold somehow. This will get better over time, without a doubt, in terms of form factor and usage. It just will. It's so. I, I really don't think I will ever be able to go back to a traditional phone again. I, I just don't see it ever happening. This is the past. The future is here. The future is now. This is the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every single day. My question out to you guys is, what do you think the future of smartphones? Do you think it's these foldable flip you know, phones or do you think it's something else? Let me know in the comments down below and I don't know, just let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. See you down the road. Peace.